There are seasons in life when we just don't understand what's going on. We've tried and we've done everything that God told us to do and it seems like it's just not working. No one's around to encourage us, no cheerleaders. It's in those seasons, in those darkest hours. I'm here today to tell you, you got to trust him when you can't trace him. You got to hold on because what's for you will be yours. You'll make it. Now listen. There are days that I don't think I can make it. Some head and heart aches, just don't think I can shake it. But God, He knows just how much I can bear. And never will he leave me in despair It may be hard right now But some way, somehow God will work it out This will Tell them about it. There have been times that I had rather given up on life. Tell the story, man. My brightest time of the day seemed to be at midnight. There's many times that I felt on my mind. And right now I feel so alone. Hmm. But I know that God will never leave me on my own. It may be hard right now, but some way, somehow, God will work it out. Witness without making it. I know. Without a shadow of a doubt that is hard But some way, but some way, somehow God will work it out And that's when I'll make it It may be hard right now But some way you told them you know we've just come through the most difficult season in our lives and one thing I've learned about God is that he's everything he ever promised he would be and I want to say to you today it's not so much of what you're going through my brother my sister it's about what you're going to you're gonna make it it's gonna be all right
is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, do me a favor as always. Would you help me spread uh, the gospel uh, literally around the world? All you have to do is hit that share button, tag your family, your friends, your co-workers, um, inbox, tweet, call somebody and tell them uh, to tune in right now. God's got a blessing with their name on it. Uh, today, I want to talk to you. I want to teach uh, from the subject seven influences that short-sighted thinkers have on your life. Seven influences that short-sighted thinkers have on your life. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 21, here's what the word of God says. It says, my son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. I would open by saying to you that you will never have long-term success as long as you are surrounded by short-sighted thinkers. When we talk about being short-sighted, there is a term called myopia. It is a term um, used to identify a defect or deficiency in the eye whereby close objects appear very clearly but distant objects ap appear uh, very blurry. I don't have a problem as long as things are in my immediate or very close to me the problem happens when what I am being tasked or asked to see is at a distance that I am not comfortable with and, and consequently at that distance things look to be blurry. That is commonly known as nearsightedness, but that, that whole term myopia also has other implications. It is not just with the physical eye, it literally means nearsightedness also refers to a lack of imagination, a lack of foresight, or intellectual insight. And so when I am short-sighted or nearsighted, um, it surpasses just a defect in my visual. It actually make ref makes reference to the deficiency I have in my imagination, in my foresight, and in my intellectual insight, or my capacity to see. The problem that most people are having now is that you are surrounded by a great deal of people who are short-sighted. I will say this to you again, that you can never have long-term success as long as you're surrounded by short-term fingers. In fact, on the in fact, long-term success requires long-term thinkers are surrounding you. You, of course, have to be a long-term thinker. Um, but there are, some, there are some negative influences that people who are surrounding you, who are short-sighted, who lack the ability to see in the distance. They don't have a problem seeing as long as it's, it's uh, not too far away. I can handle that. But it's when you start projecting and prophesying and making proclamations about what your future entails due to the details that you've seen in your spirit that they generally have a problem. Things get blurry for them. Their visual is skewed and jaded and uh, they cannot see it. But there are some issues that are going to arise in your life um, when you are surrounded by people who are short sighted. And there are seven things I want to show you. Number one, when you have short-sighted thinkers around you, they interfere with your imagination process. When I have people who are short-sighted, they will always interfere and interrupt your imagination process. When they really should be uh, respecting the space you need to saturate your soul, your mind, and your spirit, with you concentrating on the realization of your preferred reality, they are there interrupting that process. Every time you get 
consumed, almost locked in a daze, um, imagining what your life could be, imagining how much further you can go, imagining how much more money and how you can make and how much more lucrative uh, your entrepreneur endeavor can be, people who are short-sighted, uh, will always interfere with that imagination process, almost as if they are dead set on giving you a reality check. The truth of the matter is the check that my imagination is going to produce um, is going to be far greater uh, than you allowing people to bring you back and keep you grounded and rooted at a so-called place of reality. And so when I'm surrounded by short-sighted people, these are the people who are always interfering with your imagination process. When uh, they keep calling you, they keep bugging you. And every time you talk, you say, listen, I'm, I'm thinking about something. I'm playing an idea or a thought in my head. And, and they're always there to interrupt that process. So you have to rid your environment and your creative space, your faith space and atmosphere from any persons that are trying to interrupt your imagination process. Uh, if you can imagine it, you can have it. If you can, as a man, think it in his heart, so is he. Because your life goes in the direction of your thought. And so you cannot have anybody trying to infringe on your ability to imagine. The reason that is a struggle because the people who are listening at what you're imagining, at the dream, at the vision that you're forecasting, they can't comprehend it. They certainly can't conceive it and you'll never be able to convince them. Let me give you that again. They can't comprehend it. They cannot conceive it. And you'll certainly never be able to convince them that what you see in your imagination is more real than what you see in your current reality. And so if you're going to have any degree of success or fulfillment in your life, then you have to, you have to dismiss and disregard people who are short-sighted thinkers. So number one, they'll interfere with your imagination process. Number two, um, they are ineffective in generating an atmosphere of enthusiasm toward an expected end because they can't conceive and eventually. Let, let, me, let me give you that again. Number two, the reason you have to get rid of people who are short-sighted is because they are always gonna be ineffective in generating an atmosphere of enthusiasm toward your expected end. They, they, they're, they're never going to create a climate or cultivate an environment for you that is filled with support, that is filled with cheer, people who are provoking you uh, to go after relentlessly that thing that God has promised you. That, that's why you have to be careful who you grant access to uh, into your close space. Some people have to remain at arm's length. They, they cannot be uh, granted permission to come any further than they are now because you cannot allow anybody to infiltrate and contaminate the atmosphere that you're in now because only people who are around, if I got people around me, you better believe that they are helping generate and sustain the atmosphere of enthusiasm until I get to my place of an expected end. You got to have people around you say, come on, you only got two more miles left. Let's go. Put, put some muscle into it. Put some grind into it. Because otherwise, you are going to jeopardize your end result. Uh, th that's why uh, the, the Bible says that God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know the plans that I have for you. Thoughts to give you an expected end. And people who don't believe in the expected end that you are pronouncing, that again, you are expressing that you see in your imagination, in your dreams, in your spirit, they are always going to be ineffective in generating an atmosphere of enthusiasm. And so you have to disregard and discard them. Otherwise, you're going to fall under the influence of short-sighted thinkers because you can never have long-term success 
as long as you are surrounded by short-term thinkers. So number one, they interfere with your imagination process. Number two, they're always gonna be ineffective in generating an atmosphere of enthusiasm toward your expected end. Number three, the reason I have to get rid of them is because they need immediate gratification. The reason I have to get rid of people who are short-sighted is because they, they need immediate gratification. They can't conceive, nor can they compose themselves to wait on there eventually. They want it now. I can't wait until this eventually, this so-called place in the distant future that in their head may or may not get here. You, you have to get rid of them because they're addicted to immediate gratification. They will compromise the whole process for what they can have right now. They will compromise their future for right now fulfillment. And you don't need anybody around you who will compromise or jeopardize the level of time, effort, intention, and investment that you have put into your dream or your calling or the gift that God has upon your life. And anytime you have short-sighted people around you, they're the kind of people who need immediate gratification. They're standing in front of the microwave, uh, waiting on a three-minute microwave dinner. After 30 seconds pass, they stopping it, pulling it, opening it, checking it, because they can't even wait uh, three minutes for that to be done. They need this instantaneous fulfillment and gratification. But if you're going to have long-term success in any area of your life, then you cannot fall under the influence of anybody who has this addiction to immediate gratification. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh, you, you have to, in this season of your life, you've got to just buckle yourself down and say, if waiting is what is required, then waiting is what I'm going to do. If waiting is my prerequisite for me getting the things that I have longed for, I have prayed for, I have asked God for, then I have to suppress my need for immediate gratification and say whenever, whatever God does happens, I am going to be satisfied. And so we're talking about the seven influences that short-sighted thinkers will always have on your life. Number one, they interfere with your imagination process. Number two, they're always going to be ineffective in generating an atmosphere of enthusiasm about your expected end. Number three, they will always need immediate gratification. Number four, they will influence your perspective. If you keep short-sighted people around you, they have the potential um, and, and they have the access to influence your perspective. They will try to sway you from seeing on an enlarged scale. Their pessimism will have you internally minimizing yourself, second-guessing your capacities, doubting um, if you have the goods or the tools that are necessary to even accomplish the kind of feat that you are uh, daring to accomplish. And their pessimism will have you um, disengaging your efforts to accomplish anything on a larger scale or a grander scale. They will make you shrink in your own eyes. And so you had better hear what I'm telling you this day that if you're going to have success, if you're going to have personal fulfillment, if you're going to get the rewarding feeling of accomplishment in your life, um, then you have to get rid of short-sighted thinkers because all they're ever going to do is try to negatively influence your perspective. Not only the way you see things right now, the way you see things for your future, and they will even affect the way you see yourself. And so I have to get rid of anybody who is not insistent on me seeing myself the way God sees me. Anybody who's trying to sway me uh, to think or to talk or to act other than I know God has designed for me to think or to talk relative to this next move in my life then I have to dismiss them because otherwise their influence is going to be detrimental uh, to my destiny. 
And so not only do will they influence your perspective, number four, number five, is that when you keep these short-sighted fingers around you, they will irritate your spirit. <laughs> I just don't even have the time to stay right there. Um, if you keep short-sighted fingers around you, hear me, they will irritate your spirit because you're trying to force them to fit into a place they have not been sanctioned by God to fit. Now, I'll let that sink in for a moment because, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you're not stunted in your growth or your productivity because somebody forced their way in or forced their way on you. It is because you kept trying to force them to fit into a space and a place that God never sanctioned. And if God never sanctioned it, then there's always going to be friction. There's always going to be tension. There's always going to be disruption. There's always going to be disagreement. Whenever you are trying to force, because see what I found out, if you got to force them in, you're going to have to force them to stay. But you are too special and significant to God for you to have to spend another moment of your life trying to beg people to see that you really are going to be as big as you really are. I found out that sometimes you got to let people miss out on you. <laughs> Lord, I feel like dancing myself. Sometimes you just got to let people miss out on you. They couldn't perceive that you were the kind of gift you were, the kind of blessing you were that God sent you to be to them. Sometimes you got to be okay with walking away and say, hey, you just missed out on me. And sometimes you got to let them miss out and move on to the next because for every person that misses out on you because they didn't understand you or recognize you or value you or appreciate you, God's got a thousand people that are waiting with open arms that have been wishing and wanting somebody like you in their space their entire life. And so if I'm going to have any growth, any success, any level of accomplishment in my life, then I have to get rid of all of the short-sighted thinkers. Again, you will never have long-term success in your life as long as you are surrounded by short-term thinkers. And so if we're going to accomplish this and get from under the influence of short-sighted thinkers, number one, uh, they will interfere with your imagination process. Number two, they're going to be ineffective in generating an atmosphere of enthusiasm toward your expected end. Number three, they need immediate gratification. Number four, they will influence your perspective. They'll try to sway you to see what you desire on a smaller scale and scale and be comfortable with it. Number five, they'll irritate your spirit because you're trying to force them to fit into a place that they have not been sanctioned by God to fit. Number six, they will begin to impose their limitations on you. That is more common than you realize. Um, no, 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 I, you shouldn't, I don't think you can do that. Because you have to realize the people you give the greatest access to, you've now given them certain weight in terms of how you perceive your own limitations. And some people around you are so fearful of the kind of future you want, so they'll try to impose enough fear on you just so you don't leave them behind. Uh, I had to learn that. The hard way. Some people will try to talk you out of the future you see just so you can stay in the present they see. But at this season of your life, you cannot allow anybody to impose their limitations on you. You got to get up every day and say, now, I don't know about you, but I can absolutely do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. And when you have short-sighted thinkers around you, people who can't think past the now, they can't see past the now, whenever you start talking about things in the distance or what you see next year or three years from now, they will always try to hold on to you by imposing their limitations on you. You got to break that cycle in your life and say, I'm no longer going to let another person impose their limitations on me. I have the skill set, the mindset, the talent, the opportunity. I've got the platform. I've got everything I need to be the major success that I know that I was born to be, but it'll never happen as long as you're under the influence of short-sighted thinkers because they will always impose their limitation on you. And so if I'm going to have success in my life, I have to stop letting them impose a limitation on me. And number seven, finally, 
Um, we're talking about the seven influencers, influences that short-sighted thinkers will have on your life. They are going to be inconsistent with you because they think your ideas are unrealistic anyway. Let me give you that again. They are going to be inconsistent with you because they think your ideas are unrealistic. So start watching people in your life. Whenever they, 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 this trend starts where they're becoming inconsistent and they always have some kind of excuse as to why they can't be there or what came up or what they can't do. Sometimes it is only them expressing to you how unrealistic they have concluded your ideas are and they don't want to be included in it. Here it is. If you don't want to be included in my ideas, then you will not be included in the increase my ideas generate. Oh, you missed a place to shout on the midweek. Let me give you that again. If you don't want to include it, if my ideas seem to be so far-fetched and they seem to be too out there, seems that I'm skirting too far on the deep edge for you, that is cool. Stop telling me something came up and you couldn't make it at the last minute. I would rather you be honest with me and say, hey, I think that's nuts. I think that's berserk. Because if anybody has never told you your ideas are crazy, then you have not dreamed big enough yet. But if, you're, if you, you know you got short-sighted fingers around you, whenever they start becoming inconsistent with you because they think your ideas are unrealistic. Every idea that has ever succeeded was first thought to be insane by somebody. Let me give you that again. Every idea that's ever been successful, I mean massively successful, was once considered to be absolutely insane by somebody. But you know what I found out? Only you have to believe in what you're believing in. You don't need everybody else to see it. People have myopia. They, they, they can see fine as long as it's close to them. I can see now how I, you know, yeah, I could see me making a thousand dollars a week, but, but I can't see me making 20,000 a week. It's too far out there. And God is getting ready to send people in your life who are not short-sighted thinkers, but they can seem to see long-term. That's why the proverb said, don't let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Keep it before your eyes. Keep your dream, your vision, your goals. Keep that before. Don't let it out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. You can't tell everybody everything. And you have to have enough sound judgment to recognize when some people are trying to impose their limitations on you. Some people are being inconsistent with you because they simply think your ideas are unrealistic. But I want to tell you, if you're going to have long-term success, you cannot have short-term thinkers around you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you now for your word. I thank you for the insight. Father, we rebuke now, even in our own lives, our own um, nearsightedness, our inability to see things clearly at great distances, our inability to have, our lack of imagination, our lack of foresight, our lack of intellectual insight. Father, I thank you now that as we see not through our eyes, but as we see in the spirit, Father, we will chase wholeheartedly after those things you have implanted in our hearts and in our spirit. And your people shall have great success in everything that they do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You ought to give the Lord a praise right where you are today. Because I suspect that before the day is over, you're getting ready to make a list of all of the short-sighted thinkers in your life. And start making the necessary adjustments. Maybe you're watching me this day and say, hey, listen, I want to be saved. I need a church home or I want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ or I'm a backslider. I would love to restore my relationship with Jesus Christ. This is your day. All you got to do, there's an email right here at the bottom of the screen. We have staff who are standing by. We're just waiting. 
uh, to get your information. I want you to email them your information, your phone number. They are going to contact you and pray with you and further assist you uh, in your salvation process or whether you are joining uh, this ministry or coming uh, when the doors open to the physical location or you're going to be uh, one of our cyber members. You live in a different city, a different state, a different country. Uh, we are so excited about the privilege of serving you um, and leading you into those things that God has for your life. So today, if you are receiving the Lord Jesus Christ, or if you're joining this ministry, I want you to know I am super excited about your decision. Would you give the Lord a praise for somebody's salvation literally around the world on this day? As we're preparing, now it's offering time. And I say it to people all the time, we never see giving as an option. We always see it as an opportunity for our great God to show himself very strong and very mighty in our personal economy, in our own personal uh, financial affairs. So on this day, on this midweek Bible study, I want you to prepare the Lord's tithe. I, I always say it's the Lord's tithe because it belongs to him. It is the Lord's tithe. And so wherever it is you are being fed the word of God, uh, you have an obligation uh, to release the Lord's tithe into that place. He says that I want you to bring the tithe into the storehouse that there might be meat in the house of God. When he talks about meat, he's not talking about steaks and salami and turkey breast. No, no, no. He's talking about fresh revelation and insight. Whenever you tune in, uh, whenever you watch, there is something uh, of the word of God that you glean that makes you stronger, smarter make sure faith expand and grow. And so when you are a tither, that is the expectation you can have. Not just an increase in the spiritual realm, but also an increase in the material. That God would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you won't even have room enough to receive. God says your present accommodations can't even handle what I'm going to do in your life. So I need you to tie. Perhaps you didn't get an opportunity on Sunday to do it, but today I want you to do it. And uh, you're going to see the heavens open over your life. Now, I want to, on this day, I want everyone to prepare your offering. I want you to get a seed uh, on this day. And I'm going to ask you to sow um, liberally on this day. The Holy Spirit uh, did not did not prompt me to ask you for anything particular. Uh, but I want you to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to say, Holy Spirit, what should I sow? What should my seed be on this day into my ministry, into the place that is uh, nurturing my soul and my spirit, that is feeding me, that is causing me uh, to be strong in the Lord. So I want you to pray about it for a moment. And I want you to hear the Holy Spirit. Now, it's, it's, it's not enough just to hear the Holy Spirit if you do not respond to what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. So I'm going to pray with you. And after I finish praying, I want you to get your car. I want you to start sewing. The giving means are right here at the bottom of the screen. You can go to the website, give the five, cash up. You can do all of those wonderful things. Whatever is the most convenient for you, I want you to do that right now. And watch how the Holy Spirit how God just really blesses your life. Those of you who are sowing in my pastor's love offering, that information is there as well. I'm so, so very uh, thankful as always. And you know, I, tell, I say it to you all the time. Uh, it's just an amazing thing uh, that God will allow people to just connect to your heart and your spirit in such a way uh, that they are so led of God to be a blessing in your life. And I want you to know I appreciate everything that you do. I'm praying for you and your family right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless these seeds. Bless both gift and giver, both seed and sower today. Let no one suffer lack for anything that they've given in the house of God, but let them only experience increase and overflow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I'm out of time. I am not out of word. I'm just out of time for this session. I want you to know I've enjoyed my time with you. I pray you have enjoyed your time with me uh, on this day. Don't forget to make sure you hit that share button if you haven't yet shared this around the world. And uh, I want you to know I will see you on next time. God bless you.